This is Traber. We're creating the technology and the ecosystem for everything building. We're creating a market network which boasts a marketplace and a mobile first cloud based suite of project control tools for builders, consumers, trades, suppliers, for everybody. All on the smartphone, all remote, all mobile, all for building. This is Traver, and this is a building conversation. So g'day, we're here today with Dave Henson from Renexten. G'day Dave, how are you? Yeah, good Tony, yourself? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for making the time, I really appreciate it. So um, turning to home builder grants, the, when the federal government announced that scheme, which it feels like years ago, but it was only about four or five months ago now, yeah. um, it sounded like a really sound strategic move and a cle if not a clever mm. thing at the time um, and what it was I intending to achieve on behalf of the building sector across the country and let alone for consumers. Do you have a view on whether it's producing any lasting benefits or whether it's going to you know, generate a legacy that that's benefits trades, subcontractors, builders, et cetera, or not? I think, well, when it got first announced, I remember the day it got announced because I had three phone calls in the first couple of hours of being announced. Now, I hadn't received three phone calls in three weeks. So it got people thinking, Happy days got consumers election. thinking. Yep. Um, the more you look into it, is it beneficial? It can be to a degree. Um, new builds, no. As I said, you know, I'm a custom home builder. I can't build a house. Because I mean, 25 grand on a three on a quarters of a million dollar house yeah. is, yeah, yeah. it's look, almost it, inconsequential. Look, I, I, I don't know if, it, I don't know how it's, how people are going with it. Um, personally, I have not had a job where it's been used yet. Um, it got people talking, got people thinking, got people motivated. Has it done its job? To a degree, yeah, it has, without putting money out there. So yeah, it's good. In Sydney, probably not as beneficial as other parts of the, the country. The regions, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New South Wales, you know, regional areas, yeah, yeah. they'd benefit from it a lot better than what we would in Sydney. But um, but the problem with that is obviously the high cost of, uh, unfortunately, a building in Sydney. Yeah, so you personally, Brennextent hasn't really seen a lot of benefit or income from it? Impact, rather? No, no, as I said, just Other just, than prompting some phone calls, yeah? Yeah, just leads. Yeah. yeah. Can I, without putting you on the spot, do those three calls convert? Uh, one of them's in design phase at the moment. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Got to work on the other two. Yeah. Um, so in relation to the, the whole COVID-19 pandemic dilemma that we've all been living through, how conscious or aware, um, at least from your observations, do you think the building industry is now about COVID-19 and the protocols that should be operating, should be operating? Yeah. Um, as a small builder, I don't think it affects us too much. You know, we do the right thing, just be careful. Um, the, the problem that we have as a small builder is, is going to different suppliers. Um, especially if you work in the inner west and, yep. and, and other places, you've got to be prepared and be wary of everything that's around you, people that are around you. Um, they've all, you know, they've all got their sanitizers and all that sort of stuff out, so yep. that's all good. But but as a small builder, no, you, you've got to be careful. You don't have too many people on site at once, so yeah, you know, scheduling is a little harder. But we're, we're still inside the you know the area that we're meant to be. We, we haven't got too many people on site, so. It's not a big issue for us, you know, if I was industrial or a commercial builder. Might yeah, be a little bit different, but... Big, big difference, yeah. And otherwise, I mean, just the simple, you can't have people climbing over each other in a build regardless of whether it's COVID-19 right. or not. Yeah. I mean, the waterproof yeah. has got to wait until the walls are done. Yeah. Or the whatever. Yeah. So it kind of helps you yeah. meet the protocols regardless. Yeah, of like, you know, as I said, on one of our sites, it's not an issue. We, we're all inside the protocols anyway. Yeah. So let me dig a little bit deeper and before you were talking about the um, legislative changes and the whole uh, owner, um, homeowner warranty and the, I guess the media profile, it's been a little bit unfortunately the case with building generally over the last couple of years because of some very well known mid to large scale buildings that have had some yeah. problems. Um, do you think that's impacted businesses like yours generally or your business or is it something that you got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with consumers is there like an issue with there uh, under I, I, the, the surface there's no problem with consumers yeah um the problem for us is is obtaining the warranty insurances and the amount of paperwork we've got to go through we've got to apply every year um sometimes you know i, I know builders that have you know lost their revenue amount of revenue they can take in as I said, we're regulated by what we can earn. Yeah, they've lost it like that overnight 
for not not many two reasons that they've done anything wrong. Um, so that's the impact that we're getting off those bigger builders is you know how they run their business and how they shut down their businesses and and don't you know this homeowner's warranty is just a, a gimmick to them. Yeah. Uh, so that impacts us. Well, it doesn't apply to what is it over three stories? Uh, it, it, it does apply to unit unit blocks. Um, but it, yeah, that's just that's where they're getting away with it, and um, you know they can shut a company down, and someone else has got to go in and fix it, and that's where it comes out of the warranties. Yeah. So it's costing us money, and that's 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 the issue we've got at the moment. And to what extent, though, is that passed on to the consumer? Um, higher uh, percentages that I've got to pay for insurance, which I pass that insurance cover onto the consumer to pay. Yeah. So it's costing me more. Uh, the percentages, you know, 10 years ago, I don't know the figures 100%, but 10 no, years no, ago okay. you might have paid 0.7% for a new house. Now we're paying 1.5% yeah. of, of a contract price. And you know, climbing. So it's double. Yeah, and climbing, yeah, definitely. It's not going down. Yeah. So the net result is that all these changes, whilst beneficial structurally for the industry, it's the, the punter that's copping yeah. it in the neck, mm. ultimately. Yeah. At the end of the day, they, what they're doing is trying to get building better. You know, so structure can't down. argue with that. Yeah, no, no issue in the world. You yeah. know, they've got to do it. But, um, but unfortunately, it's the smaller companies that are, that are copying it because of the larger companies' you know, conduct. Conduct, mm. correct. Challenging. Listen, that was really interesting. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for answering the questions. It's yep. been really, really valuable. Um, Dave Henson from Renextend, thanks again. No worries. Thanks, Tony. Cheers.